so when we talk about the art of allowing, we're talking about less resistance. The art of allowing is the art of not resisting. So as we are moving forward here today and we are talking about the path of least resistance, can you hear how the path of least resistance and the path of most allowance are the same path? The thing that is a little tricky as we ask you to begin paying attention to the way you feel in order to guide yourself into alignment with your own desires is that sometimes you stand in a place and you say, I can't tell which path is least resistance. They both stink. <laughs> I'm faced with this decision and I cannot make a decision because it all feels uncomfortable or it feels equally good. I can't distinguish a difference. And what we really want you to hear is, and we've not talked about this in much detail before, but as we're watching so many of you beginning to attempt a more deliberate approach to following the path of allowing or the path of least resistance, we notice that sometimes you question your ability to know. And we think it's because you're a little sloppy with your vibration not really paying too much attention to the way you feel till it gets right down to the nitty gritty of needing to make a decision. Do I go this way or do I go this way? Do I stay in the relationship or do I go? Do I keep this job or do I look for another one? Do I turn this way or this way? Do I eat this or do I eat this? And what we want you to feel as we are moving forward here today, that the path of least resistance, at least for the first 30 days of your diligence upon it, is a thought path. It's a thought and feeling path, not an action path. Let the action just sit where it is for a while. Don't make any strong decisions for at least 30 days until you've got a sense of what following the path of least resistance really is about. Now here's what we mean by this. You all know, or most of you, are really becoming familiar with this business of law of attraction. You get it, that what you think about, you offer a vibration about, and as you offer a vibration about it, you are inviting it into your experience. Most of you are understanding and could speak as clearly as we are speaking it here, that law of attraction is about inclusion, and that when you think about what you want and say yes to it, you include it in your vibration, but when you think about what you don't want and say no to it, you include it in your vibration. In other words, we know that intellectually, conceptually, that you understand that you get what you think about, and that the way you feel is your indication that you're in the place of receiving whatever it is. But the thing that we want to give you here today that will put you in such a powerful place on your path of deliberate creating is that law of attraction says that whatever you've been offering vibrationally about any subject is the path of least resistance. Ah, do you hear how big that is? That's why if you're on a sort of negative rampage, it's easier to stay on the rampage than it is to change the thought. That's why when you are blissed out over something that has happened, it's quite easy to stay in that blissful mood. But when you get focused upon something that is unpleasant, it's not the easiest thing. We know you've discovered to bring yourself from that negative feeling to that positive feeling. And we've talked about it over the years in many different ways. We talked about pivoting. Whenever I know what I don't want, I know more clearly what I do want. And it's easier for me to make the statement of my desire of knowing what I don't want from my place of knowing what I do want, just like it's easy for me to make my statement of what I do want from my place of knowing what I don't want. The contrast helps me make those distinctions. But what we want you to discover here in this really advanced, leading edge, science of deliberate creation, art of allowing workshop, you are masters here, fine tuning, we can feel the clarity of your being. We're wanting you to begin to consciously acknowledge what law of attraction is doing for you in your experience. And we want you to begin paying attention to your emotions with a greater determination to know why you feel the way you feel, to really discover the path of least resistance. So I have a little story for you to sort of shake things up a little bit here, and that is you're driving down the street, you're driving the car, you have a friend with you, somebody close to you that you live with, and you know the way you're going. You've already chosen in your mind the direction you're going to go. 
And as you begin to make your turn, the specific way you're going to go, your friend pipes up and says, what in the world are you doing? Why are you going that way? I think we should go this way. And you say, all right. <laughs> but I usually go this way, and I think this is a good way to go. And I'm driving the car, so I think I'm going to go this way. And your friend says, I wouldn't if I were you. <laughs> and your friend is strong, vociferous, loud. And so you say, because it's not worth an argument to you, not an outward verbal argument, <laughs> all right, we'll go your way. But secretly you think, I hope we get lost. <laughs> Now, the reason that we're telling you this story is we think in this example, who you really are and what you really want has not been recently activated within you. Because if your true intent for having a nice drive were activated, you wouldn't, the, the path of least resistance wouldn't feel like, I hope we get lost. In other words, the reason that you hope you get lost is because you don't like being made out to be the one who is wrong. You don't like being made out to be the one who is not wise. There are less important intentions sort of on the activated table here. And so you got to admit, under those conditions, it does feel better to hope he's wrong than to accept that you might be. It does feel better for him to lead you down a blocked path than for you to have led you down a blocked path. So you're hearing Abraham say, follow the path of least resistance. And you're thinking, what in the world is the path of least resistance here? It doesn't feel good to wrestle him to the ground and kill him and go the way I want to go. <laughs> nor does it feel good to let him assume that I don't know what I'm doing and go the way that he wants to go. What is the path of least resistance? And we say, Oh, when you're out here on this sort of petty, insignificant edge, it's very difficult to really determine the path of least resistance. <laughs> but if you have been activating that day your appreciation of life, your appreciation of your relationship, your appreciation of your ability to find your way, if you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, then the path of least resistance is easy. In other words, it really would not matter which way you turned or whose advice you took. The path of least resistance always feels like, I love this person. The path of least resistance always feels like, I honor this person. Even if this person in this moment isn't honoring me, we promise you the path of least resistance is that you are honoring the other. Are you getting the sense of what we're talking about? If you have taken the time to meditate recently, even that morning, if you've been basking, if you made your short list of positive aspects, if you did some basking and, and dreaming over your coffee and donut that morning, if you have been in this place that you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, if you are in alignment with well-being and this friend pipes in and said, let's go this way, you'd say, Maybe you would say, let's go the way he says. Maybe you wouldn't. But in any case, the path of least resistance would be more obvious to you. You can feel when you get off of it. So what did we just say to you? We're saying that the path of least resistance is the vibration that is the most activated. That's why the loudest one almost always wins the argument. That's why the strongest one, the biggest one, almost always wins in these petty little peripheral arguments. But when you take the time to tune into the source energy that is really you, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. You could go which way anyone pointed out, and the universe would still yield to you a path of least resistance. You could go that way with love in your heart and discover things you've never seen before. You might even find a path that really is ultimately better. You might see flowers blooming. You might see a new house that you've been wondering about. You might see a business that you've been looking for. You might meet someone in traffic that you've been wondering about. In other words, all kinds of things open to you, it turns out that every physical direction that you go is and can be a path of least resistance if you are vibrationally open to the well-being that your source knows about. 
You can't take a wrong turn when you're in sync with who you are, and you can't take a right turn when you're not. So what we're wanting you to hear is the path of least resistance is the path that is known to you by the way you feel. It's not which way do I go? It's not do I stay or do I go? It's not do I take this job or do I take this job? It's do I carve out a path thought by thought, day by day, gesture by gesture, moment by moment that aligns me with the energy that is me? Or do I find myself trying so hard to please this one and that one and this one and that one that I lose my compass and I don't know which one end is even up relative to the path of least resistance. Path of least resistance always feels good. And the thing that is tricky with so many of you, you say, Abraham, the path of least resistance makes me worry that I might end up being a doormat. If I'm not, if I don't stand up for myself, if I don't say what I want, then won't people take advantage of me? And we say, it's not possible. When you're in alignment with the energy of your source and you are always following your bliss, following your joy, following the thought that feels best, then those action paths just begin to unfold magically before you. Amazing things begin to happen. People who are watching you can hardly believe the well-being that you are living. They want to know, what are you doing? And you say, really, I'm not doing as much as you might think. I'm just working to align myself with well-being. It's more thought work with me. It's more about controlling my mood. It's more about choosing things that feel good than it is doing anything. I sort of let the doing take care of itself. Doing just sort of opens before me. Obvious paths begin to unfold where the doing is sort of a non-issue. I just find myself being swept by the current. My real work is in my moment-to-moment moment to moment, choosing the thought that feels best. So, you really got that, didn't you? Path of least resistance always feels good, but you got to practice it in terms of thought and feeling quite a while before the action path becomes so obvious.